Martha's back live, and you never know Ooh. what can happen. <laughs> Next on Martha, the pets are in the house. Right, Francesca? We've got hot tips on how to care for yours when it's cold. Then, from Big Mama's house to Martha's house. The very beautiful and very funny Mia Long. There's got to be a perfectly logical explanation for these. She tries Martha's craft room on for size. Plus, one of my all-time favorite good things. Sugared flowers. A blossoming idea that's edible. Next. everybody. I'm very glad you could be here today. Uh, thank you, Allison Sweeney, for these beautiful lemons. Uh, they're just so gorgeous. She, I think, I think, but I'm not positive, I think she also made the card, this beautiful little uh, card with cut-out paper on it and a little note right in here. And if you didn't make the card, Allison, you really should because this is so cute. Um, she was on the show um, a, a while ago, and she was so much fun. And she just says, oh, I so enjoyed being a guest on your show last week. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, you are a lovely host. Uh, please enjoy these lemons freshly picked from my yard. They are organically grown. Thanks again, Allison. Isn't that nice? Beautiful. That looks like a Myers lemon, and that looks like a Ponderosa lemon. Boy, these are great. I can't wait to use them. Uh, well, tomorrow is the big day, and this is um, a lot of fun because uh, we are um, celebrating the 15th anniversary of our magazine, and we're inviting all of you to be part of the celebration. I'm going to show you my favorite good thing tomorrow, the ribbon board that we made years ago, and I still make them. I'm also going to show you my favorite craft and my favorite recipe. And all week we've been showing vintage clips from early days. Uh, today has to do with Thanksgiving turkey, and those of you who have been watching our show for a long time know that we've prepared turkey in so many different ways. We've brined it, we've blackened it, we've barbecued it, we've boned it and rolled it, we've deep fried it, and we've smoked it, we've glazed it, we've oven roasted it, we've spit roasted it, and probably most ambitious of all, we first wrapped it in puff pastry. Take a look at this vintage tape. Right, girl? If you're having a big crowd for Thanksgiving this year like we are, you might want to make more than one kind of turkey. I think this is one of the most beautiful turkeys. It's encased in a puff pastry. Take the pastry, like this, and put it over the turkey. You can see there's a lot of excess. So just, I use scissors. It's the easiest, fastest way to deal with this pastry. And you have to deal with puff pastry quickly because it gets soft when it's warm and it gets soft when you handle it too much. You can put the scraps right back in the refrigerator and save them because those are going to be our decoration. Tuck the pastry under the turkey like this. Make sure there are no openings and try to Press it so that you can get an outline of the actual turkey, just like that. I'm using a crimp cut sealer to make these ruffled edge strips for the top of the turkey. See how pretty that looks out of puff pastry? And for the rest of the decoration, these biscuit cutters in the shape of fluted leaves, they just cut out lovely decorations. And once you cut them out, put them on a cookie sheet and chill them. The leaves can be scored with the back of a sharp knife, like this, and make your little indentations like the veins of a real leaf. And then you'll be ready to decorate your turkey. All you need for this step is some glue, which in this case is simply a bowl of iced water and a little brush. The iced water is brushed onto the trimmings. All pastry looks more beautiful when it's glazed. And my favorite glaze for puff pastry is a mixture of three egg yolks and a third of a cup of heavy cream. And then just brush it on your decorated turkey, just like this. This is the puff pastry turkey right out of the oven. It's so beautifully brown. That's the result of that glaze of egg yolk and cream. And look at the decorations, how they've puffed off the pastry. That's why we call it puff pastry. 
I just love how it looks. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Uh, that was from my first public television special on Thanksgiving, and it was uh, a lot of fun to make. And we really did go way out in those days, as we still try to do. Uh, and we found a copy of that original video on Amazon for $79.97. <laughs> as you can see, Coral Ann has joined me today because we're going to be talking about winterizing our pets, getting them ready for this frigid and nasty weather that's occurring all around us. Uh, and we have Mark Marone over there with, oh, everybody Hi, today. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. <laughs> well, we have so much to talk about, and we'll be back with you. Take good care of all my friends over I there. I love them. I love them, too. <laughs> And uh, we're going to see a lot more of Mark a little bit later on in the show. Um, my first guest will soon be starring in her latest movie, Big Mama's House 2. Take a look at this clip. And you too, Coral Ann. You sure these aren't yours? How big do you think I am? Oh. <laughs> I'm just playing. But how in the hell did these get under your bed? I don't know. I don't know. But Malcolm would never cheat on me, especially not with... This is like four yards of lace. A woman this big wearing a thong? That can't be comfortable. Can it? <laughs> She's a mother to a beautiful five-year-old son, and she has a new addition to her family that I want to hear all about. Please welcome Mia Long. Who did those drawers belong to? <laughs> you know, it was one of those moments where you're like, is my husband cheating on me? And with this? Now, this is a very funny movie. And yes. you've been having a, an awful lot of fun making it, it looks like. Uh, I haven't seen the, the new, ver the number two movie yet. It's so, so exciting. It is. Yeah. Oh, great. It's well, it's gotten really very good reviews. Yes. And I can't wait to see it. So uh, how was it uh, making it? It was good, you know, it was, it's interesting because it's five years later, so you actually get to see the characters mature, and now Martin and I are married, Malcolm and I are married, um, and Sherry's eight months pregnant, and Malcolm says, you know, I am off to a safety convention, honey, I'll be home, and I find these big underwear, and I start putting all these <laughs> clothes together, I think he's cheating on me, and what it ends up being is that, uh, is that Big Mama is back. So, so everybody has so to check Martin out number two. So Martin is Martin Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah. So Martin Lawrence. <clears throat> and um, and uh, and it's uh, is it fun working with uh, the big man? It is. Is he really funny in real life too? He really is. Martin is a natural. He has such great timing. I've learned so much from him. He's really hello, sweetheart. Isn't she beautiful? This is Coral Ann. Is she gonna do anything? No, no, Hi, no. Darling. She'll she'll love you. Oh. Baby. Yeah. She's she's one of the most lovely birds I've ever, ever known. And uh, she lives with Mark, although she's really my pet. Right, Mark? Aww. She's yours. I used to have an African uh, parakeet. Oh, you did? Yes, his name was Treetop. Uh, but he was a little nipper. He did, oh, he come and, yeah, he Did he fly away? Pump. Did he fly away? He flew away one time around the block, landed in our backyard, and I hear this, and we're him, my mom and I are panicking. Of course. And but he came back. Oh, good. He knew her, who was feeding him. So he came Excellent. Back. <laughs> well, uh, you've appeared in so many movies. Is there anything in particular that you uh, want to do? You're still very young, of course. But what do you want to do next? I, you know, I'm I'm so excited. I'm directing a video for Yolanda Adams on Monday, and she's just a fantastic singer. The song is "This Too Shall Pass." So we're really. Uh, we're, I'm a looking crazy forward video? to that. What, what kind of, what's the, what's the She's setting? a gospel singer, yeah. and so it's going to be very, oh, you're making out Aww. with Martha. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty. Um, it's a gospel song, This Too Shall Pass, and, and it's, it's, I'm praying that it all comes together beautifully. you're directing beautifully. it. I'm directing. Excellent. Yes, well, it's so much fun. I just wanted to show some of the um, pictures from your movies. This oh, movie, wow. I actually watch quite often, Boys yeah. in the Hood. I really liked that movie. It's and, uh, with Cuba Gooding Jr. And, um, and you really got, you really came into, um, you know, into uh, fame mm -hmm. with this movie. Definitely. Now this That's movie the looks uh, good. <laughs> this is called Friday, and she's uh, this is 1995. <laughs> How was that movie? It was good. 
to do. Those are great moments, you know? Most recently with Jude Law in Alfie. Did you all see that in 2004? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how and, I learned how to play pool. And here's real life movies. This is yeah. with her son, five year old Messi. Mm -hmm. And there are new French bulldog yeah. chubs. <laughs> oh, we'll be at chubs together with Francesca. Oh my God. I yeah. was just thinking oh, they'd make a really cute So, couple. what do you think of having a French bulldog? He's sweet. He's yeah. in doggy school right now. Oh, he is. I dropped him off. He comes home February 14th. Oh, for a, long, oh a whole month? I know, but you get to go visit. So, okay. my son and I are going to visit. And my son had a, a little <laughs> meltdown because he's like, chubs isn't going to be home when I get home from school but so what's wrong why did Chubbs have to go away for a month he uh likes to <laughs> go everywhere oh he does he's uh -huh. not he's not he's, trained he's not trained and uh -huh. we just got him we got him Christmas day how old is he he's uh he was born November October 21st oh, so he's still very he's still a young. baby but yeah. I want to do it young because I had a chow before uh -huh. so you and I have a lot in common yeah uh -huh. very much so <laughs> uh -huh. I had a chow before and he passed away so I thought you know what this is a great dog he's he, they're they're very sturdy oh, they are sturdy and, uh, and sweet but but actually mark's going to help us with the frenchies because they really need to wear coats in the winter you know oh, you gotta tell me yeah mark. you're gonna you have to you'll learn a lot i because need this they get cold oh, oh she's uh, francesca was burrowing at my feet in my bed last night just having the best time i wasn't having such a good time i couldn't sleep at all <laughs> <laughs> well when we come back i'm going to show me an innovative way to transform a medicine cabinet into a kid's catch-all so her son has some organization in his life <laughs> Coming up, Martha's in the kitchen with Chef Mark Meyer. Later, Martha shows you one of her beautiful good things, sugared flowers. The holidays may be over, but Martha's back live with great ideas for your new year. My favorite crafts. Favorite recipes. And of course, my favorite good things of all time. Next all new Martha, make a Martha classic, her homemade Caesar salad. Then craft a Martha favorite, the gorgeous seashell frame. Plus, we've received thousands of letters. Martha's revealing one of her most requested good things. Ah, 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 you're going to have to watch to find out. Next very special, Martha. Mia Long, and Mia says she likes to keep things in perfect order in her home, and she's always looking for new ways to organize her son Masai's room. Now, Masai, does that come from the Masai warriors? Yes. From yes. Africa or America? Yes, Africa. Africa. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. But he a beautiful is my people. little warrior, he too. Is. Trust me. <laughs> I have to say, though, I want this kitchen. I want everything here oh, taken to my house. It's absolutely beautiful. You know, I have a question about my, um, my stove. My oven, actually. Right. What's the difference between conventional bake and bake? What's conventional? It's, it's, there's two settings. Yeah. There's a regular bake, and then there's a conventional bake. Is oh, it that C -O -N -V? one? Oh, C-O-N-V? Yeah. Convection. Ah. Uh -huh. Aha, read I your manuals. Stop. I didn't. <laughs> See, a I lot of us it. get these gorgeous appliances, and then we don't read the manuals. I'm also guilty exactly. of that. No, convection. Convection means that it injects, uh, a, 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 it has a blower in it, and it injects hot air while it's also injecting heat. Got it. So the air is blowing around, and it actually raises the temperature of the oven about 25 degrees. Okay. So it's hotter. Have you used it for baking? I did, yeah. and the cookies were hard oh, as rocks. See, I thought I was going yeah. <laughs> to. Uh, cookies really don't need convection unless mm -hmm. they're made out of something like a puff pastry that you want to inject air to make it grow higher. You know, Got and, it. Uh, light, and convection is also good for cakes. Or quiches, yeah, things and, like and that. Yeah, things that you want to puff. Got it. Uh, also, oh, roasting see, is good. good. So 25 degrees difference. And, um, and So set it a little uh, lower. Yeah, a little lower if you're going to be baking cookies in it. But, All right, uh, yeah. thanks, Martha. But, uh, okay, our project today is a little bit um, complex, but it is, makes a very good use of an old cupboard, a closet door, uh, and it's in, the, um, it's in the anniversary issue, the January issue of Martha Stewart Living. Uh, and what it is is a, uh, making a cupboard into a catch-all, uh, either for craft materials and your son, you want something for your son's mm. room, mm -hmm. and also puts magnetic doors so that you can use uh, magnets and, you know, how kids love magnets. and. Absolutely. Put things up. So what we're doing is uh, transforming this cupboard, it's like an old medicine cabinet, uh, into a craft cupboard uh, and with the magnetic doors. And to make magnetic doors, you get uh, magnetic panels like this, uh, spray 
them with the spray mount adhesive and we're going to fabric cover them because they look pretty mm -hmm. they look pretty and uh and they're useful so these have already been sprayed you spray them a little um a few minutes before you want to actually apply the fabric so just turn this over and center it on your fabric and uh then we're going to oh, the long way or does it matter um yeah it's better the long way okay yeah and then this is going to stick on here and uh, I just want to see. <laughs> I'm gonna, so not the crafty gonna, girl. <laughs> what's going to stick to this? Now take your scissors oh, and okay. cut the corners. We're going to okay. just miter the corners straight in on an angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do all the corners. And then we're going to tape this fabric down on the back and put it into the old doors of the cupboard. You can do this with a, as I said, with a closet door um, like this, where you don't, you can't remove the panel. Uh, you can just uh, either screw in the metal uh, and cover it with paper or fabric right in here. Uh, this is an easy way to insert. You can also use Velcro if you want to remove it in the future. And then these uh, magnets, see this is a mag magnetic board, okay, the, the metal. And uh, yeah, then fold those in mm -hmm. and then you can cut these off too. So okay. once, yeah, once you get these, cut these, uh, let me see, you can just cut off that much so this right angle right. So yeah it goes right like angle a, like yeah a picture frame almost mm -hmm. and once you do this you just and i so like to do this great. as neatly as possible pictures of, you know, oh yeah pictures and uh, reminders oh yeah uh, we need lots of reminders yeah with five. little kids you need a lot of <laughs> reminders and then use a masking tape like this you're not going to see this so uh, you are, and pull it taut so that it's very, very neat. All of this stuff. Take, take your time. I'm, I'm starting to rush because I know we're going to run out of time. I have one of these already done. And uh, you'll pull this nice and tight around the, <laughs> around your metal. <laughs> you're doing fine. You're Is doing, that okay? yeah, you're doing perfectly. Okay. Here I have one already done. And... You have it all done just like that. Looks neat. Uh, we have put these little um, turns on the door, which will keep the um, panel in place. Place this down, right side down. It's like a picture, making a picture frame, actually. Mm -hmm. And then with the back, this is the old panel from the door that goes right back in. And you can do this with a medicine cabinet that has mirror in it. Do we have a screwdriver to tighten these, or are they okay just the way they are? They're okay. Tom, they're okay? Yep. Okay. And then this is your door, and how pretty it looks. And you'll be able to put your magnets. Isn't that nice? These, these magnetic panels really can uh, add some, a, a lot of uh, really wonderful display plays to your, to your rooms. Uh, I like it in the kitchen, too. I like to have one cupboard that has a magnetic panel so that I can keep notes there. And, it's and also great for like a, like a desk for the kids when they yeah. have homework yeah, reminders. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, I like that. So uh, coming up next, I'll show you how to add rods to the inside of the cabinet to help with storage. And we'll be filling it with lots of fun things for your kids. Still ahead, Chef Mark Meyer will be in our kitchen to share some of his recipes for delicious relishes that can complement almost any meal. And later, another one of Martha's favorite all-time good things for decorating baked goods, sugared flowers. And now that we've completed the doors to our cabinet, you can see there's the doors. Now we can get to work on the inside. And uh, so this, and you see it has the old glass shelves. I love that. Uh, I know, and they're very, very useful. So those, mm -hmm. those can be adjusted uh, according to height. These little rods really, yeah, you can start, you can start putting, putting things, things, yeah, organize whichever way you like. Oh, this is the best part. I know. <laughs> and then these are like little shower curtains. Uh, that fit right here. These fit right on, and the screws, and this, they look n so nice too. It's also nice because it gives you that modern, clean feeling, oh, but also yes. you still have the uh, the old glass shelves, yep. which are pretty classic. Yep, really nice. Mm -hmm. And so this bar enables you now to 
stand paper. Oh, why, why is this loose there? Okay. Uh, to stand paper in here, you can just put uh, craft paper standing right oh, Matt, here. Oh, I would love these. He loves dinosaurs. Put that like that. Your little, your little artist's I love palette. This. You know, my mom is a painter, so we always have ah. art supplies. So I'm going to take some of these tips home for her. And all the. Um, <laughs> Magnets. Oh, magnets come in so many different sizes and shapes and useful. Uh, look at these little, these little uh, baskets can go right on the door, and look. Oh, it has a they're magnet magnets. On yes. There. So you can keep your little post-its. You can keep a pen there I love on the that. outside. These I love. They uh, they're just in a very attractive uh, metallic. You can line up all your magnets, your extra magnets, all along a side. Uh, these are cute, don't you think Masai would like oh those? Oh my gosh. These are dinosaur like magnets. Very cute too. We have to put them up there. Mommy loves you, Masai. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there he is. Okay, good. And I have to say hi to Nana. Hi, Nana. Oh, my good. big mama. <laughs> and all these wonderful paper uh, products that kids love to use. Uh, watercolor paper, art paper. They can all be stacked right in here. So you're making the most out of uh, a simple, old-fashioned medicine cabinet. That's uh, and if you're worried about your kids breaking the glass shelves, if you think that that's not going to be secure, use a piece of plexiglass. Oh, yeah, that works very great. loose sight. It's it's just fine. Um, but all these wonderful, if they're going to do um, any um, mod podging, they can have the different kinds of mod podge. And uh, so it's uh, a very useful. Uh, recycling of an old cabinet. Now, Nia, I know that you wanted an autograph book. <laughs> so I would love to autograph this Thank for you. Thank you so much, because I always feel like I cook the same thing. Oh, really? Yes. What do, you, do you like to bake? I don't like to bake because I will eat everything. Baking handbook. <laughs> oh, oh, God, that's okay. I'll learn to bake. Thank you. Now, be sure to look for Nia in Big Mama's house, too, in theaters, so January 27th. Thank Next, you. Mark Marone's going to be here with tips for winterizing your pets. Later, Chef Mark Meyer will be sharing three amazing relish recipes that will spice up almost any meal. Stay with us. Two kids, one full-time job, no time to eat well. I do not make good food choices. This busy mom needs help. Do you? Monday and Martha. The doctor is in. And he has healthy living tips to help you break out of that rut. Fit to eat week begins. With actor, entrepreneur, and busy dad, Harry Hamlin. We're cooking up a meal that's good for you and tastes even better. Then, take the next step. How to organize your life. Starting with your messy medicine cabinet. Monday on Martha. Well, we humans know how to tackle the cold, or at least we try, but it's up to us as pet keepers to make sure that the animals who live with us are safe, comfortable, and warm during the winter. Here with some great advice is my favorite pet keeper and good friend, Mark Marone. Welcome. Thank so thank you for bringing beautiful Coral Ann with you today. Yeah, now, she loves you so much. Now, as far as, oh, let's start with dogs, okay, because most people have that are worried about the cold have dogs. And dogs get cold. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, people say, okay, what kind of dog's gonna get cold? Well, I mean, it's obvious a short-haired dog like Dixie or Piper is gonna get more cold than a long-haired dog and like Francesca. Murphy. Francesca, short oh, hair. she gets cold right away. But it, that is, every dog is different. Some long-haired dogs don't get cold. Some short-haired dogs that are really big get cold. So you have to, you know, each dog is different. And remember, a, a dog that's not cold in your backyard in the suburbs, in New York City on the cold concrete with the cold building next to you, with the cold wind rushing, he's going to get cold. Right. So you so have to use coats. the right kind of coats. And when we're looking at a coat, it's important to keep things in mind. We want to have a V-neck so the dog is comfortable. It's got to go on and off easy. I like Velcro. This and is a very nice have, coat. Yeah, it's got business. It's yeah, fun. who's it's, this for? This is this is for Piper. This is what she wears. Oh, and okay. it's got to have you know a nice open tushy, you know, so she can squat easy. <laughs> exactly. See, but I love. Oh, I like the V-neck. Yeah, I see. the V-neck. Oh, so I... she's comfortable. See, that's the key with a coat. We have to be sure. Come on, can you stop eating for a minute? I mean, that's that's <laughs> such a pub-like thing. <laughs> They have to eat everything in sight. I know, but you see now with the Oh, with that's the a very good coat. Here we go. 
the uh -huh. cat tail on the way, and we're done. And it has an opening here for the here's harness. The, that's for the harness. Right. That's another thing. So you have to think of all these things. And here's the tushy. <laughs> right. <laughs> nice and open. Yeah. And it's perfect. And so, these coats, by the way, I went shopping for a Francesca, Mark. $80 for a coat. Would have called me, would have gave you one. I am well. <laughs> $80. Somebody oh. in the audience made a coat for Francesca. Oh, yes. Oh, no. She had sweaters made and crocheted, but oh, they're very expensive. And then they get fatter yes. or, or thinner. Sweaters they... are nice, but they're not that weatherproof. No, this is great. This is really good. Okay, so now, a, but a big chow dog like Pawpaw, he does not need a winter coat. Well, he may not, he still may want one. I mean, you have yeah. to be, as the dog's owner, you have to figure that out. But what he does need is some protection for his paws. Yeah, that's a lot. There's so much salt. Problem. on the ground there are chemicals for uh, de-icers and melt uh, ice melters uh, and so what do you do about that well fortunately we have pet friendly ice melts you had a different brand on uh, TV last week there's a lot of different brands but as long as I say pet, pet friendly. friendly then it's okay now you might say well you know there's not much I can do I live in an apartment in the city but if you tell your doorman to put it on the street in front of the building and if every doorman Ooh. did that then we wouldn't have to worry because there would be pet friendly ice melts on there. Now, what if you have a rabbit in a hutch? Well, a rabbit in a hutch like Harvey, he could do fine outside. In this but, frigid, frigid oh, weather? Oh, yeah, but you know what's the pro I don't like keep. First of all, I don't like keeping rabbits outside. No. They're very lonely outside. But if you did keep a rabbit outside, you had to realize the water. Keep two or three water bottles. Keep one outside in the hutch, keep the other two inside, and rotate them as they freeze. You know, and and in this weather, they're going to freeze every hour. And animals get thirsty so, outside, right. and when they see puddles of antifreeze, oh. okay, they'll lick it. I mean, if you read bottles of antifreeze, it says danger. danger, poison. Now, there are a few pet-friendly antifreezes, but they're not that common, and not everybody uses it. So just like the rabbit gets thirsty in the wintertime, your dog's walking down the block, you see a green puddle, you might think it's a green Slurpee. Avoid it. Avoid it altogether, because okay. that's really, really bad. Okay. And, you know, Coralan is from Indonesia. Well, actually, her grandparents are from Indonesia, so they like it warm. Okay. So you might think that cold weather is really, really bad for birds, and they don't like the cold too much, but they can deal with the cold. What they don't like in the winter is the dryness, because a bird's feather in the winter, see, this is a normal feather. It's held together by little barbs, which keep it in good shape. The barbs keep the feather from coming apart. However, in the winter, when it's really, really dry, the barbs break. Uh -huh. And the feather can no longer maintain its position. It's compromised. So you think this feather is going to keep the bird warm? It's not going to keep the bird no. warm. So what we have to do in the winter for our birds is to miss them. With warm water. Miss them cockatoos. Okay. Hey, guys. Why isn't it misting? Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> you miss your birds with water every day. Oops. Oops. <laughs> oh. Oh. Nice. Now, by doing nice. that, you're going to keep the feather from becoming compromised. Maybe you're in the Indonesian rainforest. The bird is going to stay warm because you're taking care of his feathers. Okay. The atmosphere is not so important with birds as it is with reptiles. Here, meet Norman. Oh, I wondered what was in that sack. Uh, when you see me with a sack, you know it's got something with scales. That's Norman. Oh, Norman! He's a blue tongue skink. Ice cold. Ice now, cold. Now, they're cold-blooded animals. You have to keep them warm. Oh. Right? And a nice little heat lamp. Well, the thing or is... Or just a lamp. We have lamps. We have ceramic heat emitters. We have under-the-tank heaters. Now, when someone buys a reptile as a pet, it's pretty obvious that they're going to get these things, too. But in the wintertime, people tend to forget that, you know, bulbs burn <laughs> out. Electric things break, and it always happens on a holiday weekend or at night Ooh. or when it's really, really cold. So when you're having so something what, Which like, one of these do you suggest? Well, I mean, they all work, but the, okay. well, my point is, if you have a, 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 a heat lamp on your reptile's cage, be sure you have extra bulbs, because right, if it burns so. out at 10 o'clock at night and all the stores are closed, now, what, what you about can't get another one. Keep chickens. You keep chickens? Again, it's the water. Be sure that... I mean, chickens do fine in the cold. But, Except for the Egyptian Fayumis who are very almost featherless. They're just very, very bare, and they do not like... I, I went out and found my Egyptian Fayumi frozen. Ooh. I know. I was very horrified. Uh, but they need a heat lamp. They need maybe an electric heater in the house. Uh, but you have to be um, careful about the water. You're right. It's the water. Yep. And putty cats? <laughs> putty cats, they pretty touch, take care of themselves. My putty cats sleep on my head at night. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you don't have to worry too much about cats in the cold. They're smart enough to figure it out for themselves. <laughs> they are. They find the, they find the warmest spots. They find spots. the warmest spots. I found Mozart under the furnace the other day. <laughs> well, thank you very much for visiting. Take care of your pets in the very cold weather. Next, Chef Mark Meyer shows us how to add great flavor to chicken or fish with easy-to-make relishes.
Later, Martha turns plain cupcakes into delicious works of art using edible flowers. Your wishes are answered immediately on the Martha Show. Uh, Francesca's new coat, it looks like, water, is it waterproof? One of our wonderful audience members, Lydia from Philadelphia, made the coat for Francesca. I thank you for her. She will adore this. Well, my next guest has a reputation for creating recipes based on seasonality and using many locally produced products as possible. He's also known for simple yet incredibly delicious relishes that he likes to pair with simply grilled or roasted fish, meat, and poultry. Please welcome Chef Mark Meyer of Five Points and the newly opened cook shop restaurant right here in Manhattan. Thank you for coming. Uh, my pleasure. It's really great. It's great now, to be here. Now, I have not had the opportunity to eat at the at cook shop yet, and everyone here who has just loves the toppings for the food. They said, oh my gosh, this is simple food with the most delicious relish, the most delicious, like salsa. Well, it's really what I believe in. It's that kind of approach. And I think it's what people, and you know, that that's what people identify with. So you so. have brought three different recipes today. Right. And, uh, and Mark, by the way, has a wonderful book. Uh, I love this book, and I love brunch. <laughs> so it's like, it's for, I'd rather cook brunch, I think, than, than supper lots of times. I like eating in the midday. It's and perfect. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful book for entertaining too. Uh, and there's a hundred recipes from the Five Points Restaurant, and you will like all of them. They're really, really beautiful. You'll have to come back and do some of these recipes. I'd for love us. to. Yeah, it'd be yeah. great. Are the are the toppings in, in this book or not? Nothing in that we're doing today is is in the brunch book. Oh, okay. Book. So these, these are, recipes. These are pancakes and things like that. <clears throat> what we're doing today are more, more for savory, savory uh, meat, fish. Chicken. Okay, and the recipes from today will be on our website at MarthaStewart.com. So first one is... So we have a green olive and golden raisin uh, relish. I see you have your beautiful mezzaluna. This is a medieval uh, tool. <laughs> I want you to chop okay. these. I know it says green olive, but these oh. these are a little bit riper than green. Do you all have one of these choppers? Uh -huh. Oh, these are great, and they really chop fast, especially if you want to do parsley or... Uh, and yeah, you can scrape with the bench right, scraper. And you put those in the bowl. Okay. And then we have some. Do you use this in the restaurant? This is the one that oh, I yeah, use. It's use. the only oh, one I have. Okay. You can oh, buy thank smaller you. ones. Yeah, well, these are great. I have my grandfather's. It's a single blade, though. Right. I love this. So. Okay. Get those in the bowl. Okay. All right. And then we have plumped raisins. Would you plump them in? I just plump those in some warm water. That's okay. all. You just want the sweetness, the saltiness, so nothing else added. Okay. In this case. And then I'm going to help you out with some shallot and some Moscato vinegar. Oh, yummy. That's, a, again, a vinegar that has the acidity but a little bit of sweetness. How much should I add? A couple more. Okay. So all right. three tablespoons? Yes. Okay. And then let's put in some olive oil and mix it up and, oh. there, and there you and that's it that's it you have it oh what about salt and pepper any you, let's do a little that's okay. a good idea I'm, i have to you have to taste i have to taste yeah and uh that is a beautiful relish now this especially good on what i like this on fish but these relishes i think are perfect because they're interchangeable Yummy. Right? It gets better in an hour even, right? It will. We let it sit. Now, Delicious. Now, moving on, we have a tangerine and a pomegranate molasses. I've segmented some tangerines. So you have to take the pits out. You do. That's, that's okay. the purpose of cutting so, them in half. Yeah. So just take the, take the little pits out of, of the tangerine right. sections. And then I'm going to add a little bit of fennel that has been diced and uh, a pinch of fresh grated ginger. And pinoli pine, nuts. Pine oh, nuts. Two tablespoons of pine nuts. Right. Juice, juice of a lemon. Yes. Okay, one lemon. And some of this pomegranate molasses. Oh, don't you it, love that? I, I do. I love that. And uh, you put the ginger in already? I did. Okay. This again adds that that sweet tart quality, and it, I think something like this is perfect mm. with with meat. Do you want some chili pepper? Did you put that I, in already? I put that oh, in. Oh, this beautiful. You're so fast, boy. That's why. That's why he's a chef in a restaurant. He gets things done. That looks beautiful. I want to taste that too. Maybe mm. we need a little bit more pomegranate. Mm, wonderful. Mm. I love. Now this is um, 
uh, is this Indian? This is from uh, Lebanon. Lebanon. Right. And so and, uh, um, it's, um, it's a wonderful thick syrup made out of the pomegranate juice. Right. It might be a misnomer to call it molasses, but it is a concentrated syrup. And this is an onion caper walnut relish. Right. And best on what? This I'm serving with uh, poultry, but again, I think the quality of these things, the richness and the, and the variety of flavors just make them go well with uh, whatever you might like. There's no rules in this case. So three quarters of a cup of um, just of walnuts. gently crushed walnuts. Right, it, it gives a little bit of a creamy quality by not toasting them and just sort of mashing them. And then some red onion and some cape. One small red onion. Some caper. Okay, one, two teaspoons of capers. Right. And, and a little sherry wine vinegar. Mm. So everything has a little oil, a little vinegar. Right. I oh, can't that, escape it. Yeah, okay. And, and olive oil. And olive oil. Rich olive oil. Right. Mm. This is beautiful. Now, what is this? Your, what, what do you use this on? I use this on poultry. Okay. Uh, in this case. And a parsley? Uh, some parsley. But these are simple, things that are accessible. That, I think, is the basic quality. And, and once you taste these, you'll probably come up with your own relishes, own toppings, which uh, will be delicious. So when we come back, Mark's going to show us how to use these simple relishes to best advantage. Fabulous. These are great. Chef Mark Meyer, and this is what I do during the breaks. I am taking, I am picking his brain for great places to go for lunch, uh, new discoveries. And he just told me about a place called Franny's in Flatbush and Prospect in Brooklyn, right? I love it. Delicious. It's a okay, great place. well, we'll we'll be going. All right. Now these are some of the main courses that Mark uses in his restaurant, and this is what he suggests uh, serving with the relish. So we're starting backwards. We do the relish first, then we do the main course, which oh, is that's great. Okay. That's so okay. this is uh, this is East Coast halibut and uh, so plate it up, show us I'll show us how now, what did you do to the halibut? I just seared it in olive oil. Okay. Again, salt, simple. pepper and olive oil. Salt, pepper and olive oil. And we're gonna put some roasted fingerlings. Oh, those are pretty. So how'd you do those? Just again, salt, pepper. I'm using my fingers. That's I okay. Hope that's okay. And then why don't you spoon some relish over that? On here? Absolutely. Okay. Boy, does that look good. Isn't that? What a gorgeous color. Fantastic. It's, it's rich. It's flavorful. Isn't that beautiful? Lunch. OK. All right. Now we've got some flat iron steak oh, that, now, is, that is seared. Oh, and then you, you roasted your shallots and peeled them? Is that I peeled? Did. Oh. So also, just, olive oil. So what, oil, just olive salt, oil? Salt and pepper okay. and intense heat. Intense heat and just peel the skins off them. This is much easier than peeling them first. And of you course. Get, yeah. And I'm, I'm basically lazy, so that's yeah. the best way to do it. Oh, well, this is fantastic. Believe it or not. And then, so. uh, and then the steak, uh, what kind of meat is that, this the flat is, iron? This is a flat iron. It's from the shoulder, but it is great. It, it's an economical cut, but it eats as well, I think, as any, mm. any, any steak. It looks beautiful. It has wonderful flavor. So just grilled on the grill pan. That's it. Okay. You know, anybody can do this. This is this is simple. It's mm, that looks so good, and and, uh, and the relish and the relish. So this is the tangerine, pine nut, and chili. Where where should I put that? Where do Just you put, put it? Just put it right over the meat. Okay. And again, it has that 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 it's it's. What do you say, audience? Ready for a little trip? Boy, it's, it's beautiful too. Ah, oh, gorgeous. Right. And then the last thing is, then, oh, I love these chickens, these little tiny Cornish. Are these Cornish? These or are, these are, you know, nobody wants to say baby okay. chickens, so okay. we come up with all these names. Okay. Baby chicken, Poussin. <laughs> uh, baby chickens. And, uh, and so just cooked in the, what? Again, just pan roasted, olive oil, salt and pepper. And these are... And these are Thumbelina carrots Thumbelinas. from just upstate New York. How beautiful they are. And they're also split and roasted. And you want to put some... And that wonderful it. walnut relish. Right. This is that onion caper walnut relish. And also that has, adds that richness and uh, mm. uh, unctuous oh, flavor. Yeah. Right? And, oh, and, my. And they're Wouldn't beautiful. You just, isn't this the easiest way to eat dinner? I can't imagine anything better. Those are beautiful. Well, thanks, Mark, so much for your easy approach. Thank you.
Mark's uh, restaurant is a 20th and 10th, so it's right around the corner. You can all go over there for lunch. Coming up next, one of my favorite good things, sugar flowers. Thank you so much. That's great. For a chance to meet Martha, visit MarthaStewart.com and enter Motrin's Flex Your Family Muscle Sweepstakes. For more entertaining and how-to ideas, pick up this month's issue of Martha Stewart Living at newsstands or subscribe by calling 1-800-621-9500. Here's another one of my favorite good things for decorating cakes, cupcakes, uh, big cookies. Uh, and these are sugared flowers. They're edible flowers that look almost too pretty to eat. And they're very, very easy to make. So what you have to do is either grow or purchase edible flowers free of pesticides. You can use uh, pansies, which are edible, Johnny Jump Ups, which are the little pansy looks, looking flowers. Those are the big pansies. Uh, you can use colorful rose petals. You can use stock or dianthus, which is a member of the carnation family, uh, depending upon what's in season, of course. And dilute uh, pasteurized egg white or a meringue powder with water and make it quite watery. I'm trying to coat an entire dianthus flower with a little bit of this egg white mixture. Then um, sprinkle uh, with a little spoon uh, and very lightly uh, the whole flower, front and back, with super fine, extra fine sugar. Place your blossoms on a drying rack. This can be just a baker's rack like this and let them dry completely before you try using them. If you open them up on the tray you can sprinkle even a little bit more sugar if you see that it needs it. Let these dry uh, completely, uh, shake off excess sugar and in two to four days you have beautiful flowers that look just like this. This is a lovely orange uh, pansy I think I'll use just our, oops, two orange pansies on this cupcake and maybe some clustered rose petals on this one. These are so beautiful and fragrant, and they are tasty. Sugared flowers will keep for at least a month in a dry place. I keep mine in a um, plastic uh, tub that's tightly covered, and you can actually even recreate a rose um, if you like with these rose petals on top. These are beautiful for wedding cakes, for baby showers, for um, uh, graduation cakes, uh, whatever you choose to, to uh, celebrate with a fantastic cake. Sugar flowers are definitely one of my favorite good things. For more information on where to purchase edible flowers, log on to our website at MarthaStewart.com. Tune in tomorrow for our special anniversary show when we celebrate 15 years of Martha Stewart Living Magazine. And it's an hour packed with some of my favorite crafts and recipes. Plus, I'll chat with my good friend, Jennifer Garner. You won't want to miss it.